Hey guys, I'm CMA Super, and welcome to a complete building guide for Mob of the Dead. This video will show you how to build everything in this map, as well as how to get the Warden's Key. So go ahead and turn on annotations, and then click on one of the four boxes you see on your screen, and it'll take you to that part of the video where I'll show you how to build that particular item. Or you can just watch the whole video, which I'm going to start really, really soon. So go ahead and click on one of those four boxes, or just wait until this beginning commentary is over. And it'll be over in three two, one. I'm going to go ahead and start the video. Alright guys, the first thing I'm going to show you how to build is the zombie shield, which will protect your back from being hit by zombies, and it'll also protect your front when you have it equipped and put it in front of you. And there are three pieces we need for the zombie shield. They are the trolley, the jail cell door, and the clamp. So first off, the trolley. It can be found in one of two locations, both of which are on the docks, which is where I currently am. As you can see, that says Dock. And here I am next to one of the dogs that you have to do for the Hell's Retriever. So we're going to go down all the way to the end of the docks, and I'll show you the two possible locations for the trolley. So the first spot is right over here, just in this corner. And the second spot is further down, closer to the sniper tower, right here. And for me, it is right here. And that is what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and this grab that. Like it should fit with something else. The second thing you need for the, the zombie shield, that's what it's called, is the jail cell door. So I'm going to go ahead and just... I'm not going to cut this vi right, video right here because it's right over here. Here's the jail cell door. There's actually three possible locations. This is one of them, and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and grab this. this work, and the second possible spawn location is right over here in this corner. And the third possible spawn location is going up these spiral stairs. Not this first wall, but the second wall on the corner right here. So you can find it there. And those are the three possible spawn locations. It might actually be this corner right here, but it's one of the walls on the back side as you're going up the staircase. So the third piece that you need is the clamp. And I'm once again not going to cut the video here because the clamp is rather close by. And there are actually three spots it can spawn in. So let's go over to the engine room because all three spots are in there, or the generator room. So here we are in the generator room. The first possible spawn, lo spawn location for the clamp is right here on the shelf in this corner. The second possible spot is right here on this shelf between the two entrances for the generator room. And the third spot is right there, and that is what it looks like. So between the two engines, or to the right of the left engine. So let's go ahead and grab that. And now we have all the pieces to build the zombie shields. Now I'm going to go to a workbench. You can actually build this at any workbench that you want to build it at. I recommend the cafeteria, so that's where I'm going to go. And then I will be right back when I'm over there. Alright, here I am entering the cafeteria. I'm going to go to the back and use this workbench. But like I said, you can use any workbench in this map that you want to use for the zombie shield. I just recommend this one because this is probably the best circling spot in this map for the higher rounds. So let's go ahead and build it, and then you can see what the zombie shield looks like, and you can see what it does. So press F to take it. I shall take it. So now, if I press 1, and I don't know what that is on Xbox and PS3, but if I press 1, I can put it in front of me, and it protects my front. And you can see I'm not being hit. If I put it away, uh, it'll protect my back from being hit. So now the zombie is hitting my back, and it's not doing anything to me. Uh, he will still be able to hit my front, though, as you can see. So that's what the zombie shield does. So that, the next thing I'm going to show you how to build is the Acid Gat Kit. So I will be right back, and we will start showing you that. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to build the Acid Gat Kit. And this is basically an upgrade to your Blunder Gat, if you get the Blunder Gat from the box. And what it does is it basically makes it act like a really strong upgraded crossbow from Black Ops 1, if you ever played that. Uh, all the zombies will clump up to the three bullets that you shoot, and then when they explode, they'll do uh, mass damage, basically. So you need three parts for the Acid Gat upgrade kit, and those are the Acid, the Briefcase, and the Test Tubes. So here I am in the infirmary, next to one of the dog spots, and the Acid can be found in three different spots. First off is right there, and that is actually it right there. It's bright green, hard to miss. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. I think these and the second right spot here. is no, in this no, corner no. right here. And the third spot is just straight across over here on the table right there. 
So that's where you can find the acid. And next up is the briefcase, which is actually nowhere even close to here, so I'm going to cut and then I'll be right back. So now on to the briefcase, and there are actually three possible spawn locations for this, and those three are... Uh, first off, right here on the table, right outside of spawn. So right here is the spawning circle, and my shield just broke is why the screen shook. Uh, so right outside spawn on this table right here, that's what the briefcase looks Maybe like. This is part of the I'm going to go ahead and take it. The about. second possible spawn location is past the first dog right there, going under the stairs right here and it would be right there. So past the first dog, past the B23R under the stairs. The third possible spawn location is through this narrow hallway where you can't even fit next to a zombie. Uh, and here is the cafeteria right here. Here's the MP5. So across from this afterlife box, it would be right over there in that area. So those are the three possible spawn locations for the briefcase. So next up, I will show you the possible spawn locations of the test tubes. Alright, so the third piece that you need for the Acid Gat Kit is the test tubes, and those can be found in one of three locations, all of which are here in the Warden's office. As you can see, I am in the Warden's office. It's close to, or actually Sleight of Hand or Speed Cola is actually in the Warden's office over here. So the three possible spawn locations for the test tubes are right here to the left of the fireplace near Speed Cola. Uh, the second possible spot is left of the mystery box, and in this case it is actually right here. That is the test tubes right there. And the third possible spawn location is next to this Uzi in this area right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it. That's what it looks like. And then we have all three parts for the Acid Gat Kit. And once again, just like the zombie shield, you can place this on any workbench that you want. I'm going to go ahead and place it behind Electric Cherry. I'm not going to cut because it's just right up there, up these stairs. So going over here, here is a workbench, and I'm going to go ahead and place the Blundergat upgrade, which is really the oh, Acid Gat kit thing. because it turns the Blundergat into the Acid Gat. And right now I don't have a Blundergat, so I can't show you what it does, but you can find, find plenty of videos showing you what it does. Just YouTube search it. So next up I'll show you how to get the Warden's Key, and that has nothing to do with the Acid Gat kit completely separate, but it's not a buildable. It is for the plain parts. Alright, so now I'm going to show you where to find the Warden's Key. This is not a buildable. There's only one thing you need to find, uh, but you do need it to find all, or rather get, all the plain parts so that you can go to pack a bunch. So there are actually two possible spawn locations for the Warden's Key. First off is outside the cafeteria on the hook right there. So that's actually the more common of the two. So usually you'll find it right here, and I'm actually going to show you how to get that because by default it is up there and you can't reach it, so you have to lower the hook. So how you do that is you go over here to this afterlife box, go into afterlife, and once you're in afterlife, I just started a new round, that's not good, but once you're in afterlife, you go up to this hole, jump up here, and you would shock this thing. Now this thing is currently off because the Warden's Key is not in this spot, so uh, normally it would be on and you chalk it, but in this case it is off. So once I finish this round here, I'll show you the second sp spawn spot for the Warden's Key. Okay, so here's the second possible spawn location for the Warden's Key. It is right outside the Warden's office, and in this case, in my case, it is here. That is what it looks like, right there. So the way we get it, just like in the previous spot, is we have to go into afterlife. But in this case, we go into afterlife in a different spot. So let me get the zombie away so I don't accidentally start a new round, just like I did before. There we go. Didn't start a new round. You can accidentally start a new round if you shock the zombie when you go into afterlife. So the Warden's Key is right there. So we want to go up this hole and shock this thing, which in this case is on. But now it is turned off. And that, that started a new round, didn't it? Oh well. But anyways, the Warden's Key is now down, so we have to revive ourselves, and then we can just grab the Warden's Key, which is right here. Hey guys. Simple as that. So now we have the Warden's Key, and we will use that to get all the plane parts. So that's what I will show you next, is how to get all the plane parts. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to find all the plane parts and then build the plane so that you can get to Pack-a-Punch. That's really what the plane is used for, is getting to Pack-a-Punch. There are five pieces that you need for this. They are the uniforms, the oxygen tanks, the rigging, the engine, and the control valves. 
So first off is the uniforms. I'll show you where to find those. It's in the laundry machine. So here I am in the tunnels at double tap. I basically just entered the tunnels right there next to the warden's office. And what we want to do is run all the way through the tunnels to the other end. Uh, you can get to the other end much faster using the entrance near the cafeteria, but I prefer to leave that entrance closed. The entrance is right up there. As you can see, I have it closed. But what we want to do is be in the showers and then use the warden's key. If you don't know how to get the warden's key, it is in the previous part of the video here. And you want to use the warden's key to open up this. And now this door is open. And that is the washing machine right there, but you can't just grab the part. No, no, no. What you want to do is go into Afterlife at the other end of the showers here and power the washing machine first. So let's go into Afterlife, let us self spawn, and then run to the washing machine. And at the opposite end of the room where the washing machine is, we're going to go over here, power that. It'll power the washing machine, but we're not done yet. You still can't get the part out of the washing machine. There's one more step. That step is to turn on the washing machine, and then zombies will start spawning and music will start playing. So let's go ahead and activate the laundry machine. Kill all these zombies. And what we have to do is survive um, anywhere in the map. It doesn't matter where you survive. You just have to survive until the music is over and the washing machine has finished washing, I guess you could say. So it's actually pretty easy, especially at early rounds, such as right here where I'm at round 11. Wow, just got ammo. How nice. Free ammo is always nice. So the music is not over yet. We're still fighting, as you can tell. But it is almost over. So there we go. And it appears they only have two zombies left, so that was like perfect timing. So now, now that the music is over and the washing machine is done, we can just grab the uniforms out of the washing machine. And there we go, we have the uniforms as you can see at the top left. So the next part we'll need is the oxygen tank. So I'm going to cut the video and be right back once we are closer to where they are. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to get the oxygen tanks for the plane. So here we are at the docks, and what we want to do is run all the way to the end of the docks and you'll see a door that needs a warden's key, specifically this door right here. So let's open it, and then the oxygen tanks are right there, but we can't get them! This door is closed shut. So what we have to do is go into Afterlife and then power the generator, or the volts thing, that is right over there, you can barely see it. So let's go into Afterlife and do that. There we go. We'll spawn somewhere close by, so it's not much of a run in this case. In fact, we're right outside the door. So you want to power this Volts thing, and that door is now open, so we can get the oxygen tanks, but we can only get them when we're not in afterlife. So go over here, grab the part, and now we have the oxygen tanks. Now that's in solo. In multiplayer, it's a bit different. Uh, in multiplayer, the Volts thing right there actually acts as a toggle. So when you shock the Volts thing, what will happen is this door will open, but that door over there will close. And so what you want to do is have a teammate uh, be in here with you when you shock that thing. So the teammate can uh, go grab the part, and then he can run out here, and you can shock the thing again. This door will close, this door will open, and then you can both get out of here safely. Uh, I'm sure that didn't make much sense, but you will see what I mean once you try this map in multiplayer. It's not too complicated as long as you know that Volts thing is a toggle unlike a simple switch in solo. So the next part we're going to show you how to get is the rigging. Now we'll once again cut the video and be right back. Alright, so the next part we need for the plane is the rigging, which can be found on this spiral staircase down in the tunnels. All I did was come down this staircase. And what you need to do before you go into afterlife, like you will need to do soon for this part, is go down all the way, all the way down these stairs, and then use the Warden's key to unlock the number thingy right here. I don't know what it's called. We need to unlock it with the Warden's key, and then you have to go all the way back up the stairs and go into Afterlife. And then I'll show you what to do. It's actually pretty simple, although it might seem complicated. So we go into Afterlife using this box over here. And then once we're in Afterlife, we'll see numbers on the walls. And basically we want to put those numbers on the number thing that we unlocked. So go down the stairs. We see a 2, 
a 4, and then a 1. So we're going to put those numbers in here. 2, 4, 1. And then you'll hear a sound. You know that, that spinning. So we revive ourselves, and then run down the staircase. We just keep going up and down the staircase. It's unnecessarily long to get this part, but it, it is what it is. So we have a timer right here. That's how many seconds we have to go get the part. So we just run all the way down the staircase, and then run all the way down here. Make a left, and open this door, and then we can get the rigging. I got the rigging. Rather simple, but it seems okay. more complicated than it is, I'm sure. Wow. So the next part we'll need is the engine. So I'm going to cut the video here, and I'll show you how to get the engine. Alright, so the fourth part we need for the plane is the engine, and that can be found in the warden's office. So we just go in here, and the engine is right over there. However, this door is electrified, so we can't just open it with the warden's key. If I get close, you can tell I'm getting a little hurt there. It's going kind of blurry, and if you actually do touch it, you will go down. So don't touch the door. So the way we unelectrify the door is we go all the way down through the tunnels. Uh, you can actually take the gondola if you prefer, but I'm going to go down the tunnels. You want to go all the way to the end to the generator room, and it's actually kind of a fast, uh, not fast, but far run. So I'm going to fast forward the little, this little bit right here. All right, here we are at the generator room. So here are the the two generators. We really only need to power this one. And the way we power it is by powering each of these three cables. So here's one cable. It goes to a powered box. We have to depower that in Afterlife, as well as each somehow. of the generators at the end of the other two cables. Now you will see that this one cable goes through the wall, and that is because... Whoa, don't go down here. That is because there is an Afterlife symbol on that wall. So we have to go into Afterlife and go through that wall. So we're going to use this afterlife box right there. And let me get these zombies away so I don't accidentally start a new round when I go into afterlife. Because like I said earlier, if you go into afterlife next to a zombie, they might die and start a new round, and that would not be good. So go into afterlife, and you have to do this kind of quickly, because you do have to power three generators. So here's one generator, and then follow the lines. Let's see, here's another generator. And then the third one is through this wall, just keep running, and here's the third generator. So now you can hear the music, this thing is powered, so let's revive ourselves. So there we go, the generator is powered, as you can see, and the door is now de-electrified, so we can go grab the engine from the warden's office. So I'm going to fast forward this part once again. Alright, here we are, entering the warden's office. And now the door is de-electrified, so we can use the warden's key to open it and grab the engine. The engine boy. That leaves only one more part now to get, what? and that would be the control valve. So I'll show you how to get that after another cut in wow. the video. Alright, so the fifth part we need for the plane is the control valves, and those can be found in the infirmary, right here next to the dog spot. And you don't actually have to go into afterlife for this one. It's the only piece you don't have to go into afterlife to get. It is actually right there right over there, in front of me. So let's open it with the warden's key, and just keep running in circles because we have zombies chasing us and we don't want to go down. And then grab the part. The part. So there we go, we have Control all the parts for the plane. So now what we want to do is we want to unlock the roof door. And the roof door is over here. It is through that, it's around the corner. I'm not going to show it to you because I don't want to go down due to the zombies, so... I'm going to show you how to open the door to the plane. So what we're going to want to do is go down using, or go into afterlife really, using that box right there. So let's get the zombies away from here so we don't kill them when we go down. So come over here zombies. Who's a good zombie? Yes, all three of you are. Yeah. You came over here just like I asked you to. So now let's go into afterlife. And the door we want to go through is actually not anywhere near the the door to the roof so like i said here's the door to the roof i can actually show it to you here it is closed so what we have to do is go over here into the cleaner side of the showers go through the wall to go up here you will have to auto climb jump because it's too tall to just jump and then you want to power this door right there it is now open and i'm going to go ahead and power 
dead shot while I'm at it. Might as well. There's no harm. So revive yourself and then go up to the roof using that door right here. We just opened it using that. So now we're on the roof and the plane is right here. Just hold F or X or circle. I believe circle's on the left on a PS3 to build the plane. And the plane is now built, so press F to begin the takeoff sequence. I'm not going to do it quite yet, but uh, there you go. The plane has been built. And I'll actually show you the checklist on the wall over here. Come over here, zombies. And here we go. The checklist is right here. We have all the parts on the plane. So that's how you build the plane. And now I'm actually going to show you the plane taking off as well. So here we go. We're on the plane. All I did was press F or whatever your use key is to get on the plane. And I'm not going to kill these zombies yet. So here we go. And I'm not going to talk during this. Quite adventurous, right? Like so here we are. Forever. We're on a bridge. There has to be so a way pack a bunch is right here. You can use it if you what want. I, I am I not gonna. Right? Well, yeah, I'll use it. What Why not? So that's how you build the plane. That's how you take the plane over here to this pack a bunch, which is the only use for the plane really. So next, I'll show you how to refuel the plane. And it is basically doing the same thing as getting all the parts for the plane, except you don't have to redo the puzzles, you don't have to go back into afterlife, everything is good. So I'll show you how to refuel the plane next. Oh, that Brutus went down fast. Alright, before we refuel the plane, actually, I want to show you how to get off the bridge in case you are not aware. So what you want to do is play a round on the bridge. As you can see, it's now round 15, but I got here on round 14. And if you then these chairs will appear. You want to go in any of the chairs and just sit in it, and then you'll go back to spawn and have to revive yourself. It won't cost you an afterlife, so don't have to worry about that. You don't have to have an afterlife. So here we go, reviving myself. And now we are on the mainland, and it did not start a new round because the zombie I had left was uh, full health. He didn't have any damage at all. Not even one bullet in him, not from Cherry, not anything at all. So here we are, and as you can see, if you press tab or start or select, I don't know what it is on consoles, um, we have all the plane parts, they all have check marks on them, and that means we cannot refuel the plane yet, so what we have to do is play a round here. So if I go ahead and kill this zombie, there we go, ooh, ammo, I will take the ammo, sure. So now that we've started a new round, or actually we haven't started the new round yet, let it start. There we go. And if we look at the menu again, there we go. You can see at the top left, uh, it has fuel cans, and that means that we can now refuel the plane. So I will show you how to refuel the plane once this round is over, and I have a zombie left. And as you can see, actually, before I go, as you can see in the tab menu, or the scoreboard, the plane parts are now fuel cans. But like I said, I'll finish this round and then show you how to refuel the plane. Okay, I have finished the round and actually finished two rounds, because round 16 ended on accident. But to refuel the plane, you just go back to each of the spots where you found a part. So first off is the warden's office over here. Uh, we don't have to unlock the door again or anything, we just grab the fuel can, fuel can, and we will do that for all five parts. So I'm not going to do these in the same order that I uh, grabbed the parts originally, because this is just the fastest order to grab the parts in, the way I'm going right now. So first off was the warden's office, second we will do the washing machine, and just like before at the warden's office, we don't have to redo anything. The door is open, we okay. don't have to redo the washing machine, we, we can just grab can. the fuel can. The third part, or the third fuel can I'll grab, is where the rigging was at the end of this spiral staircase, and we don't have to redo the numbers or anything like that, just like before. It'll be wide open, no need for afterlife, no need for any puzzle solving, nothing like that. It's just right here, okay. next to the number pad, I guess we, we can call that. The fourth part I'll grab is the, uh, the oxygen tanks, or really the fuel can where the oxygen tanks were. So at the end of the docks, 
we will find the fuel can which used to be the oxygen tanks and it is not in the doors there it instead it is just right out here nice and easy to grab now the fifth part we'll want to get is the um is the gondola here it is not here okay it'll be faster just to run this uh the fifth part we'll want to grab is the what was it called the control valves that were in the infirmary so that is actually at the other end of the map so i'll fast forward this little piece right here Okay, here we are in the infirmary, and the last fuel can that you have to grab is right here. Okay. Not in there, but just down here. Can. Very obvious with the green glow around it. So now that we have all five fuel cans, we can go up to the plane, and we can refuel it, just the same way we built it. And now the plane is once again ready to be used. There are check marks at the fuel cans and the scoreboard screen. So the plane is fully done. We can just board it. So press F to board plane. So the plane is now available. I'm not going to fly the plane out again, you guys don't need to see that again, but that is how you refuel the plane. And the path I took to get all the fuel cans is the fastest path you can take around the map to get all the fuel cans back, except maybe you could take the gondola to get to the infirmary instead of running all the way through the tunnels again, like I did. So that is it for this video, actually. So I hope you all found this all informative, or at least some of it, whichever parts you watched, because like I said at the beginning of the video, you could watch whatever parts you wanted and just click on those parts so like i said hope you all found this informative and i will see you all in the next video bye guys